Children are learning about the impact technology has on their lives as they are getting their very first smart devices, which are being aimed at younger and younger ages. New data from Common Sense Media says 84% of kids have smartphones by 13 or 14 years old. But an experimental curriculum about privacy aims to teach kids even younger than that. Meg Oliver caught up with some of the fifth and sixth graders taking the class. What is privacy? How does privacy affect my life? Protecting their digital privacy may be one of the most important lessons for the future of these fifth graders. What can we do to protect their information? And there are two things good behavior and responsible choices. Beyond the fun of Snapchat streaks and Minecraft marathons, these students are benefiting from a curriculum rarely taught. You wouldn't want people looking at all your stuff. Another user figured out my password. He just told him that he got hacked. Somebody can steal your identity and steal everything you have. At St. Michael's School in Union, New Jersey, the students are social media savvy and already engrossed in a digital world. How many of you feel you can't live without your phones? And how old are you? I'm 10. You're 10 and you feel like you can't live without your phone. I think family life was changing, relationships were changing, and parents were getting worried. Seton Hall law professor Gaia Bernstein designed the class for this pivotal moment in modern life. A study shows 50% of teens feel they are addicted to their mobile devices. Why are you targeting kids this age? Some of those kids we just saw, they don't even have a phone yet. It's much harder to influence people who have already made choices, who are completely embroiled in social networks. We thought there's this moment when you get your first cell phone where the kids are more likely to listen more likely to listen, start talking, and hopefully begin to understand how their actions online can impact their daily lives. That's really embarrassing, right? And some of that information never goes away. So you should always keep in mind the consequences of sharing the information. And this slime is a butter slime. 11-year-old Ava Zazali graduated from the class earlier this year. She got her first phone a few months ago and already has three Instagram accounts, one solely for slime. I'm actually not on it as much as people are because I'm always like going on the phone and I see like 20 text messages. I'm like, where did that come from? Ava's parents trust her to use judgment when it comes to her phone, but her mom stresses one important lesson. Remember, every photo, every text is indelible. And when you send that out in 10 seconds, or less, it's in cyberspace for everyone to read, to see, it can go all over the world. The digital privacy class at her school hammered that point home. The most important thing I learned was probably like to be aware that some of the stuff you post affects other people. So now maybe you take a moment before you post something and you think, hmm, is this safe? Yeah. So I always make sure with my friends if it's okay if I post something with them, or they always ask me. I learned that a lot of the stuff I thought I was doing that was safe was really not. And Meg Oliver joins me now. Good to see you. Good to see you. So do kids understand everything that they do online can be used against them, can be used to bully them, can be used to target them? Do they understand that? Well, if these kids didn't understand that, they understand it now. These classes really hit home with protecting their privacy. And what makes this class different is they try to connect the excessive use and privacy. So if they're on their phones too much, they can overshare and overshare can lead to trouble and that's what they're really trying to tell these kids limit the use think before you post is it smart to put my name out there is it smart to post pictures of my friends the answer is no mm. you know I don't have kids I always preface any discussion around children because my sister yells at me and says mm -hmm. I have a very like very little wiggle room to talk about like what parents should do with their kids but I do have nephews my sister's mm -hmm. kids and um, the youngest uh, one does not have a cell phone yet but the oldest one he's about 12, he just turned 13, has one. Um, I just worry because when you see, for example, I once told his parents, look, do you know how many Instagram followers Gabriel has? And they were like, what, huh? Like they're barely on Instagram. That's a really good point because Ava told me, she said, listen, our parents, you and me, we didn't grow up with these smartphones. Right. So we weren't taught how to use them, how to limit the use. She's hoping, and the instructors in this class are saying, look, we're gonna teach the kids, but then we're also gonna reach out to the parents. And they're hoping to bridge this gap and teach them together because a lot of these parents, they're handing these kids a phone earlier and earlier. A lot of them are getting their first phone at the age of 10. Do you think, in, in, in watching this class and looking at the curriculum, that 
because it's devised by an older person, by a parent probably, that kids are like, I kind of know this and I found ways that to access the internet that you don't even know about. For example, these like fake Instagram accounts that only they have access to that we as parents and adults do not have access to. In other words, they're a step ahead of us all the time. The way they were like when we talked, when I sat through like, you know, middle school classes about smoking and then all the kids mm -hmm. in my kid and in my class went behind the, you know, the track field and puff cigarettes. They were like, I've seen the video. Well, Gaia Bernstein is hoping that by targeting this age group in particular, fifth and sixth graders, she's getting them before they get their phones. So mm. I would say a third of these kids have cell phones. But what she's targeting is if I can get them before this pivotal moment in their life, then they can talk about it and they can be receptive to it and then they can share that information. You know, I don't want to say that the other generation has kind of been lost, but kids that are older, look what they're sharing out there and right. think of all the problems that come of it. Obviously, think and then you can post, but think of some of the fraternities that we've seen get right. into trouble with the posting. I'm betting they never had classes like this. I, I also think there's a, there's a, it, it's very difficult because they're going up against a culture, for example, that is built around celebrity, our culture, American mm -hmm. culture, that's built around celebrity. And when you look at the posts from, you know, movie stars, Kim Kardashian, and the way that they post pictures of themselves is, for example, young girls, I worry that young girls will try to emulate what some of these celebrities are doing and that's how they use social media and they're not even thinking about the, the dangers, the real dangers that exist. Right, and that's part of it. They're teaching them who's following you on Instagram? Right. You know, who are you letting follow you? And for Ava, for instance, she only has followers that she knows. She keeps her account private. Um, you know, we talked about it. I said, you know, should I post um, something about this? And, you know, I thought, right. hmm, I don't know. That it brings up an interesting debate. Um, all of the kids in the fifth grade class were extremely savvy when it comes to social media, but they were also very receptive. And I think that plays back to the point that they're young enough that they can soak this in, learn it, and maybe share it. Are there other schools that are rolling this out? There are other schools that have taught similar curriculum, but more traditional in terms of how do I change my password? And this is unique because it also reaches out to the parents, and it also talks about over excessive use and how that ties into privacy. Really interesting. Meg Oliver, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks.